All right, good evening. I appreciate Pastor Stat giving me the opportunity to be here tonight. And, um, I'm going to make sure I don't mind. My, my wife's already asking me how long I'm going to be preaching, so that's a bad sign. <laughs> hope that's not because she's heard me preach before, but... Uh, Anyway, um, honestly, uh, I, well, first of all, I want to thank Pastor Stad for the opportunity again. You know, just uh, kind of trusting his pulpit <laughs> with me, and um, I, I really do appreciate that. I, I tell you, if, if there was one word, I believe absolutely, if there's one word, that uh, the devil could remove from the Bible. He would remove this one word. And I think that one word is the word fasting. It, it's, not a, it's not really a, a popular word because, you know, it's, even though we all fast, I mean, you know, that we even have a meal in honor of fasting. It's called break fast. So we all fast at some point in time in our, our lives. But I think there's just something absolutely supernatural about abstaining from food, and that's what that's what um, that's what fasting is. And I tell you, I'm not sure I've ever even heard a message on fasting before, but the Lord's really been working in our lives lately about that, and because you know. You know, we all come to some issue in our life where there's something you can't deal with, and it seems like prayer is just not enough. And we recently dealt with an issue like that, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But you know, it's um, you know, it's if you ever, you ever think about this, what 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 involved when we talk about the Adam and Eve in the garden. And we're talking about the fall of mankind and sin, you know, entering into the whole world. You ever think about the fact that sin entering to the world came by food? You ever think about that? I mean, that's, I mean, what was the one restriction? Don't eat. <laughs> Don't eat. God had one he had one rule in the garden. Do anything you want to do, just don't eat of this one tree. And, 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 and I think that's why fasting, I think, is so effective because, you know, it just the original sin had something to do with food. And, and can I tell you, I just, man, this, this was a really hard, hard message to put together because I don't think the devil wants God to move in America. And I don't know that there was ever a great revival or great move of God or, 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 or you know, that, that ever happened apart from prayer and fasting. You know, because fasting without prayer is what you call a diet, right? It's, it's called a diet. You know, it's just uh, you don't eat, it's called a diet. But if you pray, there's something powerful about adding fasting, prayer to fasting. It supercharges your prayer life. And it's, I, I tell you something, it's something I've only recently, you know, I fast for my health, okay? I fast for my, I, certain days I just don't eat. I, for, a long, for some time I've been fasting for my health because I was dealing with a certain health issue that God's fixed through fasting. I, I prayed about it for 20 years and then discovered fasting and boop, God dealt with that health issue because it's absolutely a healthy choice. But I'm not here to talk about diets. I'm not here to pretend I'm a doctor or I play one on television or anything else like that. But a, a couple of verses I want to look at in, 
And, and I know these, these verses, uh, I know in some of the modern translations, they, they removed these, uh, removed the word fasting in these two, and I'm not here to, you know, discuss, you know, why or why not, that it's not in there. All I know is it works. You know, I just, I know that God honors his word. And, and the first one is, is Matthew 17, 21, and it says this, Jesus, and this has to do with the, the paralytic, the paralytic boy where they, you know, the disciples couldn't do any, and I think I'm sounding a little weird here, but this, ever since I was sitting in the, uh, is that better? Ever since I was sitting in the pew there, it was, I was wrestling and struggling. You probably saw me taking this thing on and off and battling with it. But anyway, um, you know, let me just go over the scriptures real quickly. Matthew 17, 21 says this, however, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. And then in uh, Mark 9, 29, it says this, so he said to them, this kind can, can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. You know, can, can I tell you, if you if you read these two stories in, in Matthew and Mark, that there's a there's a, 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 a epileptic boy, and um, you know, li listen, they those they were just casting out demons like Ghostbusters. Okay, I mean, they were just I mean. Phew, they're wiping out demons. But you know what? They came along one day. They came in along and, and they came along to a this kind. This, any, anybody ever come to a point where your life, when you, when you hit some kind of wall, and you, you discovered a this kind? Anybody ever feel like you've been praying about something and all of a sudden you come along and, and you discover it's a, a this kind? Some reason, somehow, some way you can't get an answer to a problem. Maybe you're praying for a lost loved one. Uh, some issue in your life, some health issue, something going on in your life, you're praying to God, you're persistent, you're doing everything right, but it's of this kind. Jesus said in that parable, if you will just, if you have faith, you can move a mountain. But this kind is bigger than a mountain. Because you can't fix this kind Whatever this kind is, the Bible doesn't define. I think it was more than just a demon because they were casting out demons, like, like I said, like gangbusters, ghostbusters. I mean, they were wiping them out right and left. But all of a sudden, they came to this one demon they could not cast out. And Jesus made it very clear that, you know, you, you just can't cast this out because it's a this kind. And, um, you know, I, I'm just telling you that God can work through this, and it is a biblical thing, and I think, I think it's something we should all practice. And is fasting important? Let's first of all look at this. Look, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm telling you, I struggle with this because, you know, it's, it's obviously not, it's, it's hard. Okay, fasting's hard, and People don't like hard stuff, do they? You know, you don't like, you go to, you go to Walmart, we all go to Walmart, you, you don't look for the long line at Walmart because they're all long lines at Walmart, but you don't purposely get in the long line. But, you know, I go, I, you know, you don't purposely do hard things. But, you know, sometimes you've got to do the hard thing when you really desperately need something from God. And that's what fasting's about. It's, it's when you come to that thing, this thing that you just can't handle on your own, you need God's help in this one thing, 
And it's, it, that's when God's going to move, when you add fasting. With Jesus, when he hears on the earth, he said, let me say, first of all, is fasting important? It's because of the teaching of Jesus that is. He didn't say in the scripture I'm about to read, he didn't say when, he didn't say if you fast. He said when you fast, because he said sometimes there's going to be some times in your life where you're going to need to fast. It says in Matthew 6.16, it says, Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance and disfigured faces, and they appear to, be, to man to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you that they have the reward. He's not discouraging people from fasting. He just says there's, there's times when fasting will be necessary, and he says you're going to run into some problems you can't deal with, and so when you fast, when you really want an answer, he says you're going to fast. He said, you're going to fast because um, you're going to run into problems you just, you just can't deal with. And so Matthew 5, or excuse me, 9, 14 through 15 says this, Then the disciples of John came to him saying, Why do we, the disciples of John, and the Pharisees fast often, not every once in a while, often, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as the, as the bridegroom is with them? Because Jesus is here on earth. But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away. Then they will fast. You know, I think, I, I really think that fasting is a lost art. And I just, I don't want to stand before God one day and realize that, man, there was something that he would have done for me if I would have not just been just persistent and not just praying, but praying and fasting. You know, because, you know, he taught his disciples to fast. Matthew 6, 18 He's teaching them how to fast. There's, there's, a, there's a way of fasting. When you fast, when you, when you, oh, see, so that you do not appear to be men, to appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who is in the secret place and your Father who sees you in secret will reward you openly. So he says, do that secretly. He says, you know, you know the Pharisees, they would pray on the corners. They would, you know, hey, you $20 bill, dropping the offering plate. They, you know, just, they, they, they did all that for show. And, and fasting's not something just you just, you know, uh, I, I don't think anybody, I, I think we live in a different time. I mean, you know, you could, I think you tell people you're fasting, they say, okay, <laughs> you know, you're special. You know, it's just, uh, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't think, it, we, we live in a different time. Back then it was a huge thing because, Throughout the Old Testament, people fasted many, many, many times. You see, because God, you know, it gets God's fast, uh, God's, God's ear. It really does. We have examples of the early church fasting. The brethren at Antioch fasted. We see that in Acts 13, 1 through, 1 through 3. It says, now when the church there was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who's called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manon, who was brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. And they ministered to the Lord and fasted. And the Holy Spirit said, Now separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work that I've called them. Then having fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them and sent them away. So fasting in the service of the Lord. The church, we say that in the churches of Galatia, Acts 14, uh, 21 through 23, it says, and then they had, when they had preached the gospel that the city, uh, in, in, in to, um, preached the gospel that city and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith and, and saying, you must go through many tribulations in the kingdom of God. 
So when they had appointed elders in, in every church and prayed with fasting, they commanded them to the they commended them to the Lord whom they believed. Paul fasted. You know, he says that um, 2 Corinthians 11, 23, 27 says, Are not all ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In more abundant stripes above measure, in prisons more frequently, in deaths often, for Jews, for, uh, from the Jews five times, I received 40 stripes minus one, or in other words, 39. Three times I was beaten with rods, once with a stone. Three times I was shipwrecked, night and a day. I have, uh, I have been in the deep. In journeying, journeyings, often perils of waters and perils of robbers, perils of my own countrymen, perils of the Gentiles, perils, perils in the city, perils in the wilderness, perils in the sea, perils among false brethren, in, in weariness and toil, sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, and fastings often, and in cold and nakedness. So he says he was fasting often. And we were told, but Paul, Paul made it very says, he says, 1 Corinthians 11, 1, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. He says, you know, Jesus fasted, and it was the will of God that, um, that, that, that we follow his example. You know, there's just going to be some times in your life when you're just going to need to fast. Colossians uh, 2.23 says this, These things indeed I, uh, have an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed uh, religion, false humility and neglect of the body. They are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. So we have to, I, part of fasting is just saying to the flesh, you will not rule me you know i mean it's, it's so easy to give in to our our self-indulgences and, and and live in the flesh but what fasting says is look god is god and i'm going to do this i'm going to do this for him there's something and we've i'm just recently just begin to discover that there's something supernatural there's just something supernatural about Fasting. Christians should fast, for there are times when we are in need of divine help. This is consistent with the majority of New Testament fasting in the Old Testament, or excuse me, with the majority of testing in the Old Testament. They fasted in times of war. We see that with Israel. When, when loved ones were sick, David. When seeking God's forgiveness, Ahab, Daniel. When seeking God's protection, Ezra. It's also uh, consistent with the examples in the New Testament, they fasted when they were dealing with temptations. Jesus, 40 days he fasted when serving the Lord Antioch, in, in Antioch, when beginning a work for the, for the Lord in Antioch, by selecting, when selecting and uh, appointing elders in the Galatians. Such fasting should be done in conjunction with prayer because if you fast, and we all fast because we all eat break fast, right? We will fast. It's, it, it just, it's just a diet is all it is unless there is prayer involved. Psalm 35, 13 says this. He says, but for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled myself with fasting and my prayer would return to my own heart. Psalm uh, 69.10 says this, When I wept and chastened my soul with fasting, that became my reproach. So there's, when some, there comes time when we just got to say no to ourselves. In Ezra uh, 8.21 says, Then I proclaimed a fast at the river Hava, Ahava, that we might humble ourselves before our God and seek from him the right way for us and our little ones and all our possessions. 
And um, when should we fast? When, as I mentioned this earlier, when prayer does not appear to be enough. Because there's going to be occasions, I tell you, there's going to be occasions in your life when prayer is just clearly not enough. And, and you're going to run into that situation and in, 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 there's some things we're just not going to be able to deal with that, without that. Occasions that call for persistent peril. You know, there's, there's so many times that, 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 that call for that. Luke 18, 1 through 8, he says, And he spoke a parable to them that men ought always to pray and not to lose heart. There was a certain city, a judge, who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city who came to him saying, Get justice for me, for my adversary, and he would not for a while. But afterwards he said with himself, Though I do not fear God and regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest her continual coming by her continual coming, she'd weary me. Then the Lord said, "Here, and then the Lord said, "Here, what the unjust judge said, shall God not avenge His own elect who cry out day and light, night to Him, and though He bears long with them? I tell you that He will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will He really find faith in the earth? You know, persistent prayer." And, and, and prayer is, is, is so assistant, it's, it's so uh, important. And persistent prayer is just so very important. But there's some times when that just is not enough, using the Lord's own words. And one more scripture, it says Matthew 9, 14 through 17. Then the disciples of John came to him and we... We talked about this a little bit. Why do the disciples fast off and your disciples fast not? Then he said to them, Can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them and then they will fast. Just, just kind of a, uh, just in conclusion, I just want to kind of give a, a, just, a just a personal illustration about this. Um, you know, my, my Alma and I were, um, praying about a situation and, you know, we prayed about this for a long time and, and, you know, and, and it was a mountain in our life, a mountain issue with somebody we love really very much. And no matter how much we prayed, it seems like that mountain just would not move. Sometimes you're going to face a mountain. And, and that mountain is not going to move. But um, we decided that um, uh, that we were going to fast because even persistent prayer wasn't enough. It just wasn't. It just wasn't enough. And uh, you know, not long after we continued to pray. But laid that thing before the Lord and said, Lord, we're, gonna, we're, we're, we're not just going to pray about this thing, this person, but we're going to fast about this thing and we're going to fast in your name and we're going to fast for this person, Lord, and we're going to ask you to move this mountain because it was a this kind a mountain. It was a this kind, a demon. It was a this kind. 
that couldn't be solved. It was a this kind that couldn't be fixed. A this kind that wouldn't go away. A this kind that we couldn't deal with. A this kind that just wasn't working. But you know what? This kind, this kind moved. And God fixed that this kind. And, uh, and uh, you know, I, I just, I tell you, uh, not the most eloquent person in the morning. Yeah, uh, we had a little rough time with this thing today, but uh, I know the devil's been working me, fighting me on this one. But I tell you, if he could remove any word from the Bible, he would remove that word because this kind, this kind, whatever this kind is, you've got to fill in the blank what this kind is, comes not out but by prayer and fasting. Thank you very much.